Hi, I'm Stephen, and in this module we will demonstrate how to scan checks into Voyager and post the receipts. We will examine and discuss the information displayed, explaining what each field means and any changes that can be made. So let's scan some checks. Place the checks in the scanner and select the Scan Checks link from the menu. The check scanning screen will initialize. The first field to verify a change is the received date for the checks. It will default to today's date. This is useful if the checks were received over a weekend and perhaps you are not scanning them until Monday. Accurate received dates will ensure late feeds etc. are calculated correctly. In the same batch you can scan some checks with one date, then change the date and scan some different checks. Each check will post with the appropriate date. If you change the date after the checks are scanned, all checks will post on that date. Clicking the Start Scanning button will start the check scanning and individual check details will be displayed in the check scanning screen. As you click on each line item, you will see in the viewing window the image of the relevant check is displayed. On the scanning screen, we can see that the line items are highlighted with different colours. Green means the resident is associated to the checking account information and the check amount matches the outstanding charges amount. Yellow means a resident is associated to the checking account information, but the amount is either $0 or does not match the outstanding charges. Red means no resident is associated or the line item needs attention and action must be taken before the batch can be posted. You can also see that for some of the checks the amount is populated. This is done by the CARLA software which attempts to read the amount of the check from the amount box on the check image. If it can't read the amount it will leave it as zero and you must fill the amount in. For the green and yellow items all that is necessary is to verify the tenant and complete or verify the check amount. The check amount can be entered directly on this screen, reading the amount from the image above. For the red line items, we need to understand what input is needed. Scroll to the right and look at the comment column. You can also run the validation report, which will give you more detailed information. Normally all we need to do is associate the check with a tenant and complete the check type and the amount field if necessary. Occasionally we will have a bad scan and the software was unable to read the MICA or account information. Please contact your cash management specialist to understand what to do in these cases. Please note, at this point the report and post buttons are inactive. Remember, until we post the check batch, the receipts have not posted to the GL and are not on any ledgers. So to associate a check, we click on the red box, which opens up the association screen. Please note the checks we are using are just test checks and the names on the check may not match the demonstration tenant's name. We complete the tenant details using the lookup links on the left as we normally do elsewhere in Voyager. Then press enter detail. This will bring up a screen that is the same as a normal receipt payment screen. We select the document type for this check. It is important to get this correct because you do not want a money order, bill pay or cashier's check account information associated with a single tenant. For example, all money orders purchased from the gas station near the apartment complex will have the same account and routing information, only the check number will change. So each time a money order is scanned, you will have to select the tenant who presented it. If commercial or personal check is selected, this will permanently associate that account with that single resident because it will be only that tenant who would present this check. Once a check is associated as a personal or commercial check for that tenant, the next time a check is seen from this account, Voyager will automatically select the tenant and the line item will be green or yellow for the future checks. You can override the receive date for any check by editing this field. So having selected the correct tenant and document type, we now need to complete the amount field. We can see the amount on the check image to the right and tab or click out of that field. The amount will apply to the unpaid charges following the normal Voyager payment order rules. You can of course erase the distribution and apply the amount manually if you want to pay off specific charges with this check. When completed, press the Save button and this will return to the main scanning screen. Complete all the other checks in the same way. You can save your progress by using the Save button at the bottom of the screen. If you find a check that scanned badly or is incorrect, you can tick the delete check button. Pressing save will remove that check from this batch, allowing it to be rescanned at another time. 
Using the Delete All Check button will, as the name suggests, delete every check in this batch. When all is completed, you can then close or post the batch. You can confirm this by the fact that the Report and Post buttons have become active, or by looking at the Validate Report tab, which now should be empty. Using the Close Batch button will give you two options, yes or no. Yes will lock the batch and no further scanning or changes to this batch can be made. No will just close the screen and leave the batch in attention required. Note at the bottom of the screen there is the number of checks scanned and a batch total. It is encouraged that before scanning checks, a manual tape calculation is run and these values should match that result. To post a batch, which will post the receipts to the general ledger, run the report first as is normal in Voyager. Again, this should show the expected totals, and then post. To see the status of batches, there is a dashboard. This is explained in the next video, the CheckScan dashboard.